I'm super excited about today. I don't know about you, but whenever we get to have these chats, for me, it's uh, it's life changing. And not just that you are getting this information, but I'm, that I'm also delivering this information. And what excites me is that we get to learn, we get to grow, and we make we get to make decisions. Okay. For those of you that have uh, been on this journey with me, on this growth journey with me, congratulations! Because growth is something that I should be able to congratulate you on. For those of you that are just joining us along. The way you have missed a lot uh, so you can go to my youtube channel and be able to get everything that we have talked about we have talked about relationships we have talked about life we have talked about and today we want to talk about the abundance of life i feel like this year i feel like in this season of your life we can never and i hope you don't agree or accept to sinking to just living okay to just surviving to just moving on in life and going with the flow but that you decide to thrive and to flourish and to live a vibrant life and that is what I wish for you that is what I pray for you and uh Today, just like it has been for a, for the longest time, I've talked about this. But today, I want to expound it a little bit on it a little bit more. Today, I want us to um, to base our talk on John ten ten uh, that I have come or I am come. Okay, that is um, uh, which, which translation is this? Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, that they might have life and that they might have life or they might have it more abundantly, more abundantly, meaning that you have. Have the, the super abundance of the thing the abundant life refers to abounding fullness of joy and strength of spirit and soul and body okay so that means for me this is more about the quality of life okay the quality of life that you do you are not just living for the sake of living that you are not um, surviving that you're not just floating on life that you're not just living to see another day that you are not just you know just a mediocre in life okay that you're not just accepting everything the way it comes to you but there is a sober choice that you must make and i'm not even going to go into how you have to um, you know have god as fast in your life and all that because quality of life you can never separate the quality of life from god but again, there are so many other things, and I want us to look at what the meaning is exactly. We've been talking about upgrading our lives, and we've been talking about upgrading, upgrading our spiritual lives, and saying that it's not the the most or the only important aspect of our lives, but it is one of the most important aspects of our lives that affects all the other arenas of your life okay so the moment you understand that the quality of life that god wishes me to have the quality of life but how do i live a quality life here on earth how do i live a life that supersedes a life that is above what i have known before what other people around me are living a life that is not just surviving okay we are not seeking to survive not this year maybe other years we could have survived but not this year so I just want us to look at the quality of life, okay? If he came, that he will give us the good life, the quality the, the quality life, the abundant life, okay? Uh, that means it's the life li lived according to the intentions of God or according to how God intended us to live. And I will tell you for a fact, God has never intended that we live a life that is inferior. He has never intended that we live a life in confusion. He has never intended that we live a life in stagnation. He has never intended that we live life in regret or that we live life without knowing what's coming next that we just bump into life that we just become accidents in life okay or that other people become accidents in our lives no he wishes that we have a life that is abundant and uh, when we say abundant that means it contains certain things certain aspects of life and one of those things is the vibrant life that I want us to talk about today that life is vibrant life is lively and I know that I'm talking to people because part of what we have been sharing as a prayer request in the mentorship of recent has been the fatigue that has taken over in in so many people's lives you feel you are tired you feel exhausted and some of you are great leaders you have people that are following you you have people that are looking up to you some of you are CEOs some of you are business owners some of you as in you are 
people of substance in the world and you have irrefutable contribution to the world, but that does not st stop the enemy or the devil from poking or from getting you into the exhaustion, into the tiredness of life and into wanting to give up, even asking what your value is in this world. And I know so many people are going through that. I've been talking to leaders, I've been talking to company owners, I've been talking to people in, in politics, even in our, in, in, in our government. I've been talking to so many people. And let me tell you, this is not segregating or leaving out the younger generation. I've been talking to those that are in secondary, in primary as well, because my work cuts across. I've been talking to employees. I've been talking, and let me tell you, it's cutting across. Something called fatigue and exhaustion and people being tired and people wanting to throw in a towel. They are not utterly saying, I'm going to throw in a towel, but they're taking a back seat in their own lives. They're taking a back seat in their companies. They're taking a back seat in their governments. And they're not making the decisions that they should be making. Why? Because the notion of abundant life, of an abundance in life that brings the vibrance of the soul, the vibrance of the spirit has been taken away from them. They have lost it because of the so many things that are happening, happening in their lives. And so if you're living that kind of life, that means it's not an abundant life. It's not a vibrant life. And that means that's not the life that God intended for you. The life that God intends for you is one where there is vibrancy of life. And I just want us to, to, uh, to, to look at um, when we talk about uh, a life being vibrant, okay, how, how, how do you even tell that a life is vibrant? I just put down certain things because uh, for some of us that have lived a life where we know that our lives are meant for more and our lives uh, have a bigger appetite for more, it doesn't mean that we are not grateful for where we are. We are grateful, but we are not content. Like we are not saying that this is it, I have arrived. We still think there's a lot more businesses. There's a lot more money out there. There's a lot more souls to win. There's a lot more life to be lived. There's a lot more happiness to be experienced okay and then some of us because when you talk about vibrance and that has just come to me when you talk about a vibrance you experience it okay you don't just talk about it for so many of us we have been in places where we are talking about the vibrance of life the abundant life but we are not actually experiencing it we talk about the healing, we talk about the, the, the happiness, we talk about the good relationships, we talk about everything that God has intended for us because we know, we know what is good. We can differentiate what, what is good from what is not good, what is excellent and what is not excellent. And for some of you uh, uh, that followed last, uh, they, uh, there's a, some time back we talked about excellence, okay? And we say that doing the best in this season, okay, with what you have, with the resources that you have available, so you realize that you don't have to wait for anything in order for a life to be vibrant. That means your life can be vibrant right now and you can live life according to how God intended that you will be able to live life. And some of it is building quality reciprocating relationships. Who doesn't want that? And you can see that when you get into a relationship that is, recipro that, that is re reciprocated or love that is reciprocated, you feel the vibrance of the soul. You come alive, okay? And so many of us have talked about relationships and so many married people are also talking about relationships. And I will tell you for a fact, so many counselors and so many coaches and so many pastors and so many of the clergy are talking about relationships and how good they must be, but they're not experiencing that vibrance of relationships, of good quality relationships. And that's what I'm saying, that you are meant for more. You are not supposed to just talk about it. You're supposed to experience it. So I need you to just not get settled with you talking about it and people know, oh, she's talking about relationships and she's talking about, oh, this, I mean, she must be living a good relationship herself or she must be in a good marriage herself or she must be in um, A, B, C, and D. No. I need you to be able to stop in the tracks and reevaluate your life and say, am I living in alignment? Or there's a dissonance or there's, um, the, 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 there's a discrepancy between what I am talking about and what I'm experiencing. How can I be able to bring this experience into my life so that I can live a vibrant life? And so many of us know what exactly we need to do.
If you're in a relationship, you know that certain relationships are not, to be, not meant to be. If you're in a marriage, you know that then you must be able to work hard towards the vibrancy, that all the silent treatment must go away, that you must be able to have good communication, that you must be able to speak their love language, that you must be able to it takes sacrifice, it takes work, it takes, and we don't want to do that work. But the abundant life that God is talking about is not going to go, come sliding on a silver platter. I say that God is not a lie and he's not a man and he cannot be mocked. What you sow is what you reap. When you sow good communication in a, in a relationship, when you sow sacrificial love, when you sow quality time, when you speak their love language, as in it's easy for someone to be able to reciprocate. And even when they don't reciprocate, you know that you have somewhere to start, okay? Because you are already wanting, you are yearning to experience it. So number one, we have said that is a vibrant life. And a vibrant life is created with love that is reciprocated or relationships that are reciprocated those relationships okay and so many of us when we are living in the journey of life I know that we have gone through certain periods where we are competing with people and uh, I've always said that you know what it's not good to compete it's good to compete with yourself it's good to look at what others are doing picking a leaf okay picking inspiration being motivated and then you bring it over here and you compete with, you compete with your past self you're like you know what I'm going to be better than uh, the person I was yesterday I'm going to be richer than the person I was yesterday I'm going to be you know wiser than the person I was yesterday but you're picking inspiration you're picking motivation, you're picking, you know, examples, you're picking a leaf from another person's life, um, another person that is on a growth trajectory that is actually making it in life. So an abundant life, and when we say a vibrant life as one of the ways that we live an abundant life, is when you bring, uh, you don't just compete with people, but you compete with yourself, that you think there's something better tomorrow than I have today, and you so you add, you, you, are, you desire to see it okay so that means that you live in a constant state not of dissatisfaction no not of um of wanting to give up no but of thinking that there's something bigger tomorrow that there's something better tomorrow i have lived that life i know it and it's the sweetest life where you don't live in fear, you don't live in constant regret, where you don't live in constant, you know, uh, speaking down on yourself, but you feel like, you know what, there's, it's, it's, it's a good life. It's, it's a vibrant life. Tomorrow is going to be better. Tomorrow is going to be livelier. Tomorrow I'm going to, 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 to be better even in business. I'm going to be better even at my speaking. Why is it that we put in the effort today? We put in the effort today because we have hope. And a vibrant life is one that is full of hope. Okay? So I'm talking about this so that you can be able to look down, to look into your life and ask yourself, am I living life according to what God intended? Am I living life in abundance? Or am I cheating on myself? Or am I um, bottling down or settling down for less than what my life could actually have been? Okay, so while we're talking about uh, the vibrant life, the other thing is you seek to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone when you live a vibrant life. And that is why I said, if you can pray, pray that you get out of stagnation and fatigue and stress and being tired and exhausted, okay? Because then there is no clarity there. There is no growth there. There is only mumbling and regretting and looking at other people who are running their race and wanting to pull them down. Why? Because you feel so exhausted. And if you take long in that exhaustion, the exhaustion becomes a depression and the depression brings about a meltdown and a meltdown down if not contained your life is going to blow up in your own face and I don't think you want that to happen so what you want to do is to be able to do everything possible whether you need to make consultations whether you need to pray whether you need to fast whether you need to to read whether you need to whatever it is that you need to do do it 
so that you can be able to cross over to living life according to how God intended it. Living life according to God's plan. Because he says that before your parts were woven together in the sacred place, I knew you. I predestined a good future for you. There is nothing that God has ever prepared that is bad. There is nothing. That even when we go through the valleys, even when we go through the tears, even when we go through the, the, the lack, even when we go through all those things, one thing that we can be rest assured about is he has said that I have planned a good ending, that I have good thoughts for you, towards you. The thoughts to build you, the thoughts to make you better, the thoughts to, to fortify you with goodness. The thoughts that you will have a good ending. So if he has those good endings, he has intended. Let me tell you, God has intended. By the time he says that I can leave the 99 and look for one, that means he's not satisfied with the 99 living a good life while one is actually not living a good life. He would rather live the 99 and look for one so that he can bring that one also to make them a hundred that they will live a fulfilled life. So in all angles, when you look at it, what God intends for you is life in abundance. And an abundant life, number one, we said, is a vibrant life. I, I want you to check your soul. I want you to check your spirit. Are you as bubbly as you used to be? When you look at vibrancy, I think the best explanation for a vibrant life is your children. They don't have any worries in the world. They, 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 have, they, they are, I mean, the energy, vibrance is energy. Vibrance is hope. Vibrance and a person that is hopeful, a person that has energy, when you look at them, you can see it in their eyes. It just feels like, you know what, there is something good that is about to happen. They are anticipating and anticipating is also something that actually turns our lives around. It adds on the vibrancy of life. Have you ever anticipated that, you know what, ha, you know, at lunch today, I, I, I promised myself I'm going to have this, this good meal. And when I talk about good meal, some of you will think about junk and what. So, I mean, to some of us, we have gotten to that place in life where a good meal means either chicken breast and a salad. <laughs> and by the way, you look forward to it. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to make my own dressing that that doesn't have so much carbohydrates, but, but carbohydrates. But I'm I'm just going. I'm I look forward to that. Okay, I look forward to resting. I look forward to this. That means you are anticipating. You look forward to something that is a vibrant life. You know, when you look forward to to seeing someone that you love, that is vibrancy right there. You're unsettled. You're even trying in clothes. And by the way, this doesn't just happen to the men it also happens to them to i mean to the women but also to the men they will try on a shirt and they'll be like ah but will this shirt look nice on this date and they'll be like no 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 no. i'm not going to put on blue i will let me put on a pink let me put on a lighter color let me put on why because they have the anticipation they are going to meet someone that they love that is vibrance that means that that doesn't seem like a dead life that doesn't seem like a fearful life that, does, that doesn't seem like a life lived in regrets that is a life that there is that there is something good that is about to happen i don't know about you but i live life like there's something good that is about to happen to me all the time and this is something that we actually even shared uh, with my husband sometime i think it must have been yesterday morning uh, i was telling him about um a dream that I had and uh, he was actually um, uh, colorating that or he was um, using that he spoke back into my life and he was telling me so many people in this era are living under constant fear that life is not going to turn out the way they want it to turn out and uh, they are holding on uh, to to money they are holding on to things thinking that there is a looming like there is luck that is coming there is famine that is coming there is bad that is coming so when you live in that kind of life what the devil is doing is he's creating a lot of fear in your mind okay and that fear is actually going to cause you 
to self-sabotage. Instead of depending on the promises of God, instead of believing that God once has prepared a good life for you and that when some of these things come or when people speak into you, it's like more of a warning, but they're not telling you go ahead and be gripped by fear and fear so much that you will not make any decisions in your life. So the devil also uses the same things, that he will use words, people will speak, even prophets will speak, you will get dreams, and what he is doing is he's infiltrating your system with fear that you will be able to not live the life that you are supposed to live. So before you know it, you are you are hoarding before you know it not just hoarding but you're not able to to work hard enough you're not able to show up in a vibrant way why because now fear you've been gripped by fear and let me tell you god has never promised that we live a life of fear and when he spoke this to me when uh tim spoke this to me to me said this to me it made a lot of sense a lot of sense because i, I i've been talking to so many people and they've been experiencing the same things and so I'm like, okay, now it is time to bring back, to spark that vibrancy back into action, okay? If you're supposed to live an abundant life, an abundant life is not living while second-guessing yourself. An abundant life is not lived while in fear. An abundant life is, living in, is lived in creation, in anticipation, in hope, in energy, okay? And I hope that you can be able to see that together with me. And it's that energy that helps you to stretch beyond your comfort zone. You're like, you know what? I'm not doing what I, I did yesterday. I'm going to do something different. Why? Because you know it's in your power to do these things you know that you, you you you're like a child who feels limitless that i can jump i can do anything i can say anything okay and that is the life that god wants us to believe uh, or even to live okay where we take daily actions about the things that we love so many of us are procrastinating and we don't know why we are procrastinating but we're procrastinating because we're just our lives are dull they're not vibrant very dull. So when you live a dull life, there is a way you just don't feel like doing certain things. There is a way you go through life because according to how you feel. Do I feel like doing it? Do I not feel like doing it? I, I don't feel like showing up. I don't feel someone invites you for a party You're like, no, I don't feel like uh, going anywhere. I just feel like staying in and just being there. But even when you stay in, there is no value. There are some of us that, uh, for example, sometimes I've just refused or said no to either going out or doing certain things. But I have this anticipation that when I stay, I am going to be more active. I am going to, to get more value. I am going to research more. I am going to read more. I am going to pray more. Let me tell you, these days I even get super excited about just creating a time for me to pray. That I will even be hesitant to go out, do certain things, go to parties. And I'll be like, you know what? I just want my time with God. And I look forward to that. Now, that is a vibrant life. And I know that a, a, a vibrant, I'm taking long um, in vibrancy, but another element about a vibrant life is a life that is intentional. It's not a life that is flowing where you don't know where it is actually going. A life that is on autopilot and you don't know where it is heading because so many of us are living life on autopilot. I mean, what was is what is and what will forever be and you just don't feel the strength to lift a finger to change anything about your life or to pause when you need to pause or to fast track it when you need to fast track it as in there is no intention to it now a vibrant life however is very intentional very intentional you'll be calculative where you go who you meet, who you want. As in, a vibrant life will not even tolerate people that come to cover it or to dull it. When someone is it, it wants you to be dull so that they can, they can shine, okay, you will tell them that, you know what, if you think I am too vibrant for you, too bright for you, please take some shades, put on some shades so that the light can, can, can cut itself, okay? So, as in, you'll be careful which relationships you walk into. You'll be intentional which people you entertain around your life. You'll be intentional what kind of work arena you stay in. You'll be intentional what material you read, what TV shows you watch, what magazines you read. You'll be very intentional. And you will know that when you get into an area and you feel your energies are coming down and you're being swallowed up by confusion, you will know that this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be, I mean, the vibrant me 
I'm not going to put myself in a place where I'm constantly pushed down, pulled, pulled apart, torn apart. No. You will even know what kind of relationships to entertain. That means the intentionality. You are very intentional about everything that you do, who you give your time, who you give your attention, okay? And you'll be very intentional. Even when it's a marriage that is not serving the purpose of the vibrancy, you'll be like, you know what? We need to change a few things. Even when it's your home, by the way, because you're very intentional, it will be... Let me tell you, the moment you are caught up in the fatigue and the tiredness and the, and the exhaustion of life, that is going to show in how you're going to do everything, even in your own home, even in your own marriage, even in your own work, even in your own performance, even as in, in every area of your life. So how about you make an intentional decision that, you know what, I want a, vib a vibrant life. And I think I should write a book on this. A vibrant life because I know that this is going to help so many of us to know what we can entertain, what we can't entertain, what we can, we can allow ourselves feel, what we can't allow ourselves to feel, and how to be able to move from that fatigued life to a vibrant life that God intends that we will live. Because a vibrant life is part of the package of the abundance that God wants us to live. Remember he said that he has come that we will have life, we will live life, and life in its fullness, life in its abundance. And if you want that abundant life, let's look into how vibrant your life can be and how you can make it. Okay, so let's take a moment, think about that, come back, let's finish.